All right. So based on our assumptions, we just stated a minute ago, X bar will have a normal distribution. We need uh, simple random sampling, normal population, small sample size, known standard deviation. But for X bar to be normal, we just really need a normal population. The 68, 95, 99, 7 rule says X bar will fall within two standard deviations of its mean 95% of the time. The actual number is 1.96 standard deviations. You know, the Z tables are talking about standard deviations, and so we can look in the Z tables for what range of Z values contain 95% of the values, and the real number is 1.96. So we're going to use 1.96 standard deviations. The sample mean will be within 1.96 standard deviations of the true mean 95% of the time. And we know the mean for X bar is the population mean, and we know sigma for X bar is the population standard deviation divided by root n. So for 95% of samples, we know X bar falls within 1.96 sigma for the population over root n of mu. I can just say mu, because mu for X bar and mu for the population are the same value. So we have a picture of the density function here. Get this out of the way. So here's the mean in the center, and here's that distance. One point here, I have it marked off as standard deviation. So this distance here is sigma over root n, like that. So I got sigma over root n's here. So if I go 1.96, there's almost two of those on each side of mu. I will capture 95% of the values for x bar. Okay, so that's mu minus 1.96 sigma over root n and mu plus 1 minus x sigma over root n. And I've got mu there, same for x bar as the population. It says x bar tends to be close to mu. How close? Well, within 1.96 sigma over root n of mu tends to be close. Well, that's because it only happens 95% of the time. So we're going to take that statement that x bar tends to be close to mu and turn it around to say mu tends to be close to x bar. And then we'll take x bar and we'll extend on each side of x bar a distance to create an interval, which in most cases captures mu. So you might think of it like this. Maybe I can do it like this. Well, that's not quite big enough, but I'm thinking it might work. Um, impromptu in my office. I'm going to go that distance with a couple sheets of paper. Here we go. So here's mu. There's the distance, right? So if we, for each value of x bar we might choose, we go that distance on each side of it. When we think about the kinds of x bars where it would go far enough so that interval captures mu. If the x-bars are within that distance, plus or minus 1.96 sigma over root n, then the intervals I create using those, so here's the x-bars that could happen down here, right? Those kinds of x-bars I might have, if I stay that close to mu, an interval that, so I'm thinking this is the x-bar here, maybe that helps. For those kinds of x-bars, if I reach out that far, I capture mu. And that's the idea behind making a confidence interval uh, created right here in my office. So we'll talk about some algebra that makes that uh, come true in a second. But the idea is basically what, what shows here, that if you go that same distance away, away from where the good x bars are, then that interval is going to reach out far enough and uh, capture the actual population mean. And we'll follow the story on a bit further in a second.